Hi, my name is Reese, and welcome to another video. I like fixing things, anything to do with solar or batteries, or really anything else that's interesting. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a battery system that I've been using for the past month and a half. So Blue Eddy emailed me and said, hey, you wanna try our new battery system? And I said, sure. And then these three giant boxes showed up, and inside were these, the AC300 and these two B300 batteries. These units are a decent size, but I don't think I've ever seen thicker styrofoam in a package. So if you get one, at least you know it'll get to your door unscathed. So this is a battery system, and maybe you're curious about batteries for your RV, home backup, off-grid, or to use as a buffer for electricity prices. For example, I'm in Pennsylvania, and I just heard that next month our electric rates are going up by 44%. It won't affect us very much because we have all those solar panels, but boy, that's a big increase. And just so you know, Blue Eddy has not seen this video ahead of time, so I'll tell you what I really think, share some test results, and also show you some real-life scenarios where you can use these. So what's interesting about a setup like this is that the main unit has no battery in it, and this can be very confusing because the batteries are down here. I have them stacked on top of each other, and they are connected in to the main unit through these big cables here. And so this thing manages everything, and you can have up to four separate batteries connected into here. And if you happen to have all four, you'd be talking 12.28 kilowatt hours of storage, which is very similar to what a power wall might be at 13 and a half kilowatt hours. So a benefit of a setup like this is that you can move it around if you want. Uh, each battery does weigh about 80 pounds, and this guy up here weighs you know, about half that. So the AC300 manages the AC inverter, DC outputs, as well as other battery management functions. I actually wanna take a peek inside, so I'll open up, I'll show you what's inside of here. But before I do that, let's look at the outside. It's got six uh, regular you know, AC outlets, as well as an RV plug here. And by the way, I'm not a big fan of these dust covers. It's got USB-A ports here and a USB-C port at the top. This is a power delivery. You can run your laptop off of this. Over here, we have a 24 volt 10 amp port. And you would think that this is a 12 volt port, but it's not and has a big warning on here. 24 volts DC output only. I'll show you what you can run and why this is here. And then over here, you have a 12 volt 30 amp plug. You have to get an adapter. It doesn't come with that. It has a nice touch screen here in the middle, which shows you all kinds of information and some settings that you can change. Now, one downside to this screen that I found is that the viewing angle isn't so great. So if you're looking at it from this direction, it's hard to see, but when you're looking straight on, you can see it no problem. And on the top, you have two wireless charging pads. On the side, here's where the batteries connect in, and here's the AC input and DC input, and it does come with the cables for both of these. The B300s are the batteries. They are rated for 3,072 watt hours. The chemistry inside of here is lithium iron phosphate, and they are rated for 3,500 cycles. The B300 has its own DC outputs, the 12 volt car port, USB-C and USB-A ports. I'll show you how you can use them and when I get to the real life scenarios. And it's also got a simple state of charge indicator. On the side, you have some DC inputs, so you can actually charge this battery all by itself. And it comes with this cable with MC4 connectors on the end. And down here, you can charge it with a wall AC power adapter from Blue Eddy, which is a separate purchase. Now let's talk about charging up the batteries. This system can handle some large power inputs. You can do up to 2,400 watts of solar and 3,000 watts of AC input at the same time for a total of 5,400 watts. Now, many wall outlets are only on a 15 amp breaker, so you'd have to modify things at your house to output 25 amps if you wanted to reach that 3000 watt AC input limit. For DC charging, it comes with one cable with two sets of MC4 connectors on the end, so you can have two independent sources, say like solar or the 12 volt port in your car. But here I have both hooked up to solar to see how much I can get. And with both sets connected to the six panels I have, I'm seeing a consistent wattage over 2200 watts, so very close to that max of 2400. Now, if I add the AC input at the same time, drawing 15 amps at 120 volts, I'm getting a combined charging total of about 4,000 watts. And one feature I like with AC charging is that you can select between 1 and 30 amps of input current. Now, for the output, the AC300 has some great numbers with an inverter that can output 3,000 watts continuous and a 6,000 watt surge. Here I have it connected to an RV through the 30 amp port, and I turned on the air conditioning inside as well as all the lights, and it had no problem running that. 
And so I added another load of 1200 watts and that put it over 3000 watts of AC output. I ran it for more than five minutes and again, it had no problems. At the beginning, I mentioned this strange 24 volt port that looks like it should be a 12 volt port, which is why they had to put a warning there. Now, one reason to increase the voltage is to get you more power without increasing the amps. And there are a few things that I can think of that were great here. A portable refrigerator is one of them, and these can typically run between 12 and 24 volts. Another use case is charging a smaller, more portable power station since their input can likely handle that voltage. Now, if you're looking for a standard 12 volt port, you'll find it on the B300. It has those separate DC input and output ports, so you can use it as a standalone device. So here, for example, I have the B300 being charged by a solar panel and running a portable refrigerator at the same time. And if you're with the B300 by itself and you need a little bit of AC, you can use a small inverter like this one. Another test case that I did was to pretend there was a power outage. And with one B300 connected, I put it in my kitchen and plugged in my fridge and my chest freezer downstairs. In addition, we made a couple cups of coffee and cooked with our pressure cooker. And the battery kept the food cold for about 13 hours before before it ran out. So if I connected another battery, I could expect to double that. So one of the things I noticed about the AC300 is how quiet it is. And so I wanna take the side off here to take a look inside to see what's going on in here. So this is kind of an interesting design here. It looks like it has two main boards, one on this side, one on the other. And the back side of the boards are attached to these giant heat sinks that start here and go all the way across to the other side. You can see the fins on these heat sinks and they're trying to create this channel of air here in the middle, and I assume that's for efficiency's sake, um, so it doesn't have to run the fans as much. I don't know if you can see it here, but in the middle, there's like four or five giant coils that are at the bottom, and it looks like these two fans, one on either side, are there to pull air across those coils when it's necessary. This is a view looking through to the other side. You can see there's a small fan at the top and a plastic divider that looks like it's there to help channel the air through those fins. And with that smaller fan, it looks like an attempt to cool things down, keep it efficient while keeping the noise low. One thing that people might ask about is inverter efficiency. This is how much AC power is coming out versus the stated 3,072 watt hours. I tested it a few times and the best I got with a constant power draw of 1200 watts was an efficiency of 87.5%. When I drew it down over eight hours with random loads, I got an efficiency of 78%. And when I ran it for over 13 hours, I got 75%. Now these decreasing numbers make a lot of sense because the internal circuitry is running longer. So what are some other things that I like and don't like about this system? Well, I like that it can act as a UPS. It has a pass-through AC so that when the power goes out, it automatically switches over to battery power. You can see a short flicker in the lights here in this test when I cut off the wall AC. I also like the fact that you can customize the recharge setting. You can have it prioritize solar over charging the grid, or if you have time of use rates with your utility, you can change the time frames when the rates are lower. I like that if you use Bluetooth, you can use the app and you don't have to create an account to talk to the AC300, but if you do want to connect to it over the internet, you do need to give them your email. I really like the 2400 watts of solar input, though I wish they had a higher voltage input because the maximum is 150 volts. The strings of three panels each that you saw that I had were about 130 volts in total, so I wish I could have put a fourth panel on there. Something that really surprised me is that this doesn't report how much time is left to get to zero. Many other power stations will say, hey, there's four hours left to zero or whatever. You kind of have to guess on your own based on what the loads are. And also a small thing on the app and on the screen here, if your AC load is under 100 watts, it will not show anything. It'll just show a zero. So when I was running my monitor, it should say about 60 watts, but it said zero. And I like and dislike the setup. I really like how it's stackable and they fit really well together, but I dislike all these big cables that stick out the side. So overall, depending on your situation, this can be a great option for a battery system. You could even get two of these, combine them together to get a 240 volt output. Now, Bluetti gave me a discount code. If you wanna buy from their website, check out the video description and I'll keep it updated. And finally, I didn't cover all the options or add-ons you can get with this, but I hope you did enjoy my look at this system.